Isso. Praise God. Okay, so uh, tonight we want to pick up from where we left off um, concerning um, the soul. If someone can get for me Third John uh, chapter one verses two. Uh, Third John chapter one verse two. And um, if someone can get for me, let's see. Psalm 23, verse, we'll go one through three. Third okay, okay. Uh, I heard two voices. Okay, uh, Mr. Cheney, you have Third John? Yes. Okay. Third okay. John, chapter one, verse two. Yes. Beloved, okay. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your, your soul prospers. Okay. All right, so we want to continue back from, um, continue on rather from uh, when we were talking about um, this particular passage in 3 John uh, chapter one, uh, in verse number two, where he is talking to the church and he said, um, it, it is my desire, my wish um, that you above all things, that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so we, we talked about how that um, from this particular scripture, we understand that the things that we um, attribute, the things that we um, acquire um, or the things that we see in life is connected to the condition and even the, um, the, the posture of our soul. Um, so before we um, before I move to the next scripture, can um, can anyone tell me just um, as a way of reflection? Can you tell me some of the things that you remember uh, from before? What did we talk about with the soul? What was the question again, Apostle? Can anyone tell me just from reflection, what, what were some of the things that we talked about in last week about the soul? What do you, do you remember? Any of the things that we talked about? I remember that you said it is our soul that testifies to the truth of God and that the soul is comprised of our mind, will, and emotions. And it is from that, um, from our mind, will, and emotions that must be renewed um, every day by the truth of God's word. And that's how it trans our minds begin to transform. Once the word of God is attached to our soul, it's in our soul, then we can be able to become transformed in our mind, will, and emotions. So that when we prosper in things of health and prosperity, uh, prosperity and joy and in uh, love, it's a condition of our soul. So in as third John states that even as our soul prospers, our the condition of our prosperity is attached to the condition of our soul. Amen, amen. Amen. Anyone else? Now, if we look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23. If someone can get that for me, then we'll 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 hang on to Psalm 23 for a moment. Someone can get Psalm, I mean get Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, please. Keep your heart with all diligence, 
for out of it springs the issues of life. Okay. So now we understand why there is a need for the soul, one, to be prospered. And we understand now by Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, that as our soul prospers, that we need to, this shows us what our um, perspective should be on it, that we should not be frivolous, that we should not be careless, um, that in fact, we should be diligent um, to guard over, um, if you will, the affairs um, or the condition and posture of our heart. It's almost like, um, when most when we think about Fort Knox, right, and we understand that in Fort Knox is gold, and anyone that knows anything about Fort Knox knows that because gold is considered a very valuable, precious thing, that it is uh, it is there is a house or place that has been specifically built to store the gold. One, then number two. Um, that there are, there is a sufficient um, guard detail that is assigned um, over the building to protect that gold because of how precious it is. With the understanding that, um, that everybody understands how valuable gold is and that some people um, based upon their understanding of it um, will try to go through um, wrong means to try to acquire um, what's in it. And so when we think about it from that perspective, um, um, Proverbs 4 said we ought to guard our heart with all diligence. And when it's talking about our heart, we know that, you know, we're also talking about this also interchangeable with our soul, which is comprised of our mind, will, and emotion. So anytime you see mind, um, it's still um, going to include your soul uh, I'm going to include your will and emotions. Um, and so when we get saved and we come to Christ, um, the Bible says we are to work out our soul salvation. Okay. The working out of the soul really is a, it's a, it's a, it's a work. And the, 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 that work is comprised of, um, and going back to uh, something Evangelist Lisa um, taught, um, it is a, a, a taking off, a putting off, and a putting on. The Bible says, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we come to Jesus Christ, the working out of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, um, and remember, uh, we talked about the, uh, uh, we talked about the quote from Thomas Merton. He said, every, every, um, here we go, every moment and every event of every man's life on earth plants something in his soul. So now the work of uh, our work for the soul, the working out of the soul is taking the word of God, okay, uprooting things that have been planted in our soul, our mind, your thought life, your, your will, your ability to make decisions and your emotions um, in the feeling and sense realm. Um, so we are, we are taking the word of God to uproot things that have been planted in there that are not from God, that are not of God and replacing them with the things that are of God. So when we look at it from that standpoint, we see how now, because I was gonna ask the question, how do we prosper our soul? Um, by taking heed to the word of the Lord. How should a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of the Lord. So every time we, we, we read the word or hear the word and we actively take the word and apply it, or we, we obey the word, what's happening is our obedience to whatever that word is, is making, is, is making a transaction in our soul. So when you, when you hear the word of God, 
All right, let's go back to something we, we already talked about, right? Um, when we talked about, it said, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all our heart and thy neighbors that self. Obey the Lord. Um, so if God tells you, the word of God says, don't lie, right? So in a situation, when the enemy creates a situation and an opportunity where you have a choice between doing what's right or saying what's right versus saying what is not right or doing what's not right, you're in the middle of two decisions, okay? Now, depending on the condition and the posture of your heart, because I can tell you this by experience, when opportunities come to us where we have to choose godliness or, or, or righteousness or unrighteousness, the challenge is because that, that opportunity is trying to connect to something that's planted. Because otherwise, it wouldn't even be a consideration. So now we in the, we, we're at this place where we have to make a decision. And when we obey the word to do what's right, it's at that moment a spiritual transaction is performed in our soul. Something is up, something ungodly is uprooted. And then there is a planting of the righteousness of God, affirming, affirming. Does anyone have any questions? Prophet Karen hand is up. Okay. Today, um, what I was going to say as you were speaking uh, about our um, our soul and prospering this evening, when I went out for a walk, one of my neighbors, she's eighty three, was working in the yard, and we held one another. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we would. We, we spoke about the outcome of the election. Mm -hmm. And what she said to me, she said, yeah, we're all breathing easily, but we still have to pray. Mm -hmm. But she went on to say also, she said, neighbor, she said, I did not watch and I have not watched the news, any kind of news for the past four days. She said, because I wanted to keep my spirit, my mind, and everything pure. She said, because what was coming out, okay, and the things that she was seeing was disturbing her and stirring up old emotions, old feelings. Now, this is a lady who's 83. And, and bringing back memories, an old way of life, and it was making her uh, feel angry. It was making her feel bitter. Uh, she said, you know, it was making her feel like she wanted to retaliate. And she said, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm not going back down this road. This is not who God made me to be. So I've got to, I, I, I need to put all of this stuff away. And I don't need to watch it. Um, she said, evil is going to be evil. Wickedness is going to be wickedness. And she said, I had to get my mind back on the things of God and what God told me and what the word says to me to concentrate on. She said she even found that her body was aching more. Okay. As she was listening to all of this, she was even saying how her back started hurting and things just wasn't happening. So as she said, once she turned the TV off, she began to pray and uh, she, she talked to the Lord about it and, and, and repented of her feelings and everything. She said, now I got a peace. My back's not hurting. My leg's not hurting. I don't have a headache and I'm sleeping, sleeping well. So I just wanted to get that testimony because ex that's exactly what we were talking about. Her, her emotion had caused her body to start going downhill, it was affecting her health. And so she realized what it was and she had to make a decision to do something about it. And that's what she did. 
And that was just this evening we talked. Wow. Wow. Um, um, can someone get for me Isaiah 26 and 3? And um, and and uh, whoever who have ever has Psalm twenty three and uh, one through three, hold on to that for a moment. Um, I want to. That was a great. I, point I have Isaiah twenty six. Okay. If you can read that, please. Isaiah 26 and 3, King James Version. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Okay. Um, and, and someone get for me Psalm 42 and 5, please. I have it. Okay. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his continence. Okay. So now, when going back to um, the testimony Prophet Current just gave, that, that is exactly what we're talking about. And listen, this is why one of the things that the Lord um, really said to me when he first started talking to me about the restoration of the soul and the need um, for us to really, as saints, begin to press into um, the, the work of prospering our soul. Because there are many other things that we look in the world that sometimes we give our hand to and our time and attention to um, looking to prosper in those ways, but when we when we come to find at the end of the day, it's not as profitable to us where it really matters. But when we really give ourselves to the work of causing of prospering our soul, as uh, uh, John said, uh, uh, the prospering our soul, the prosperity of your soul will impact your entire life, not just one area. And so um, as the, the uh, uh, prophet's neighbor was talking, listen, this is a time when we really as believers need to do this because listen, while we, there's some that is conceded to celebrate, celebrate victory, others, um, um, they are in dismay and, you know, uh, some are in hatred, um, uh, and so many things that is going on as a result of this decision of uh, concerning this election. And um, in wisdom, prophetically, God is really um, wanting the church to prepare. Um, this is not the time to be at ease. Um, this is the time to gird up the lungs of your mind and be, be sober. Um, this is the time to prepare um, even for the next uh, uh, season of war, this next place, next time of war to prepare for, because things are, are getting ready to be, you know, to, to really un open up. And um, while we're in November, um, but yet I, 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 I know that um, November was, uh, so we're talking about seven months um, from now through July at least. Um, we're going to still be contending with some of these things um, with this virus. And so if your soul is lacking, if your soul is not prosperous in God, what will happen is the things of this world, the, dis the, the uh, disappointments and all these things will impact you in a negative way and you won't be able to stand according to the way that God said. So, so when we look at Psalm 42 and 5, um, David said, so why art thou disquieted in me? So disquieted means being in a place of dis-ease. Um, disquieted is a place, um, it can be a place of stress, pressure, discontentment, um, um, of, of worry, anxiety. Um, so all of these things can be um, uh, 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 
can be described described describes the word disquieted. And there's more, but that's just some that uh, come to my mind now. And so David was saying to, to restore his soul. In other words, to bring his soul back to a place of prosperity. He had to talk to his soul and remind his soul of who his, his source and strength was or is. See, because what happened is the circumstances, and we know that some of the circumstances where David had enemies, uh, he, at one point he talked about how his enemies surrounded him. And so, you know, um, David had enemies. Okay, let's go with the time when, 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 with Ziglag. When, when David, all his men, those that rode with David, because they saw the lack, they wanted to stone David. The Bible said David had to comfort his own, he had to encourage his own self. He, he, he had a, a, a choice of allowing what those men, his men that rode, that were standing there with him. And I want you to hear me. Sometimes it's stuff that's close right in your space, right around you in your space that you are still going to have to resist the warfare of, of coming against your soul, your mind, your will, your thought life, how you think, what you think, your will, your ability to make decisions and your emotions of how you feel the sense realm. You're going to have to stand against it because that action is intended to make your soul poverty or poor. And David had to encourage himself. When he encouraged himself, what that did was it restored his soul or brought his soul back um, into right uh, alignment with God. Does anybody have any questions or any comments they want to make? Okay. Apostle. Yes, ma'am. Right in Psalms 23, the second verse, where it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside still waters. There are times I believe God has to actually cause circumstances to happen that make us stop where we are, what we're doing and rest or come to a place of peace. We don't either know that we are that far gone crazy or that we needed that bad. He actually has to make situations happen that we think sometimes are negative at that time. Because yeah. we need that rest. We need that peace. We need to get away from that person that's driving us crazy. Something. Amen. Because there are times, like I said, there are times he, he, he makes us lie down. Because uh, sometimes you're in a situation where that is beyond your strength. And God steps in to do for us um, things that we cannot do for ourselves, but he does it for people who have, who have made the Lord um, their help and their hope. And so when you do that, when you get made, that, made the Lord your help and your hope, you've given that right to God. And so God will step in and God will do for you sometimes things that you can't do for yourself. He says, he makes me lie down, lie down in green pastures. So it is a it is a, a an illustration of a place of rest. It's an illustration of a place of peace. It's an illustration of a place of provision. So what happens is when our soul is prosperous, it is peace, it's rest, it is provision. Amen. So um, what was the other scripture I gave? Um, thou will keep my mind in perfect peace. Did someone have that? Yeah. You said Isaiah 26, Apostle. Okay, can you read it, please? It said, I will keep my mind in perfect peace. I will keep, them in, keep him in perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Okay, so now we see trust in God is one of the ways we cause our soul to prosper. He said, I, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. 
watch this, because he trusted him. So when we trust God, right, then we are we are keeping or placing our mind. And we, when, when I say our mind, we know that we're talking about our, our thought life, our ability to make decisions, and our emotions or, or sense realm, okay? We, we are placing that in him. And when we do that, he causes our soul to prosper because we have peace and we know that peace or shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. So in a situation um, of a, a, a temptation where the enemy is coming against us with anxiety or stress or pressures, um, it seems foolish to the mind um, and it seems foolish to reasoning at that moment to put your trust in God. But the Bible said God takes the foolish thing to confound the wise. And so in that moment of decision, when you take your trust, you put your trust and your hope in the Lord, right? You obey the word of the Lord and you do what God tell you to do. What happens is your soul become prosperous and the fear and the anxiety and the stress, the depression and all of those things that the enemy wants to place on you to be to cause your soul, your mind, will, and emotions to become bankrupt in righteousness, you avert that. And now your soul becomes prosperous because you're walking in righteousness. And as a result of your soul being prosperous in that, what happens is it affects your, your life. He said, because I, I, I would that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. And I think all of us know that the works of stress, pressure, depression, torment, fear, anxiety, all that work, the culmination of it or the fulfillment of it does impact our bodies because we know even by medical science technology that it is known that, that different sicknesses and disease affect or, or, or come about because of a person's heart um, or postural condition. I remember um, um, our um, past, a late pastor, um, when she was, her body was fighting against um, uh, kidney, uh, kidney disease and um, and she had issues with kidneys and on dialysis. And every time um, the enemy would, would bring attacks, the spiritual attacks, it would come in such a way uh, that would try to create stress and pressure and tension and all of these things. And that spirit of infirmity would literally, tangibly impact her kidneys that the numbers of the kidneys will go down, um, the health and even whatever um, uh, uh, prosperity in her kidneys that she would make, that progress would be depleted because of it. And, and when she would go to the doctor, the first thing the doctor would say to her, what are you worried about? What's stressing you? Because that's impacting your kidneys. Your numbers have been impacted by that. Does anyone have anything they want to uh, comment? Apostle. Yes. I was going to say that um, there is a whole, hold on Z, yes. Um, there's a whole area of research that looks at mindfulness and they don't necessarily focus on Christianity, but the sort of the outcome and what they, they look at is kind of parallel to, they know enough to know that if you're able to center your mind on something, mm -hmm. whether that be something positive, whether it be a memory or anything like that, that your health improves. And um, I think for the for believers, our focus, our, our default has to be God and our trust in God so that we are able, because it works. It works, and you know, so it. Um, our default has to be our trust in God when there are situations, or like you said, speaking to that anxiety and any fear, anything like that. 
Um, and I think that it takes um, rehearsing that, um, you know, it may take us longer in the beginning of our journey to snap into focusing and centering ourselves on God. But over time, um, our default or what we automatically go to should, should start to line up with um, the word. Amen. And listen, just like in the natural, so in the spiritual. Um, anybody, all of us know in the natural that anybody that is desiring um, to acquire or accumulate any um, significant amount of wealth understands that apart from um, somebody willing you um, a ridiculous amount of money, um, aside from that, that if you're going to acquire wealth, it's got to be built, which means that it is a systematic process of decision making that you have to uh, embrace. Um, that it, that is all targeted or in that vein, so or road, if you will, that will lead you to this destination. And so it is in the spirit. You know, um, we come into the counsel of God one decision at a time, one step at a time. Um, is how we 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 do that. So systematically, faithfully, if we obey God one step at a time, faithfully, you one decision, when God tell you to do something, do that. And, and, and how we increase it is that the quicker you obey God, the faster we can move, we can move to a, a, a destination, move a place, up to a place. But this is how we get there. It's not gonna happen by osmosis and nobody lay hands on you and make you just just trans tele, teleport you into that place it would be nice and good but it don't it don't happen like that and and you know so it it takes working walking he that's why he says work it out as the lord reveals things to you you obey what the lord says and when you do that step by step then what happens is you start building prosperity in your soul. And what happens is after you do it systematic, systematically for so long, what happens is you build a momentum. And when you build a momentum, just like a locomotive train, right? A train that's moving at full speed that has built up momentum is not easily stopped. And so this is how we do it. So you have to do it step by step, systematically obey the Lord. Um, and every time we do delay in obeying God, uh, we hold up the process and that much longer our soul is deficient. Um, so someone get with me, uh, uh, Philippians 4, 8. We're going we're gonna to end here. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, please. I have an apostle. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to go there. <laughs> uh, King James Version, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay. Now, this is where we just want to end tonight. Um, but this, this obeying this scripture is a good work for us as a believer to undertake. When our mind, our thought life, um, and we know even connected with our thoughts is also your ability to make decisions because if your mind is under attack, what happens is um, your mind is bombarded with all of these thoughts and you're warring in your mind. And what happens is the enemy intends for confusion to be in your mind instead of order. And when the enemy can just toss, it's like, you know, you know how you just throw up. Uh, okay, I don't know if every, every I don't know if anybody's seen this. This was a bat. I'm not a, like a fan fan of Batman, but I, I remember. I don't. It was a while ago. I've seen 
there was an episode in um, Batman or something with the Joker, and he had this lucky coin, one coin that he would always toss up. And what happened was in this particular time, when he went, because he had this process of flipping his coin up and then where how he landed would be what he would make his decision on. And so when he flipped the coin up, Batman takes a whole handful of coins that look just like it and toss them up in the air with his coin. And it messed him up because now, instead of being able to focus on one coin, here's all of these coins that he didn't know which one was his because they were all up in the air together. And so, um, but just to kind of illustrate that picture that um, if the enemy can kind of keep all of this going and, not, and, you, and our mind is not orderly or ordered or focused on the word of God, um, ate the word of the Lord, what will happen is you're, you lose the ability to make a decision. And, that, and then so stress and pressure and all those things then begins to affect your emotions. So you can see the process, how that happens. So um, at any kind, anyway, so that's a good work for us as a believer to undertake on. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are of a good report. He said, if there be any praise, think on these things. And so this gives us something to focus on um, uh, for our mind, a, a, a work to be about a good work. And, um, and what will happen is that will cause your soul to be prosperous. Whatever things are lovely, all right? When you focus on whatever things are lovely, it keeps you, the enemy, from trying to entice you with unlovely. Whatsoever things are true, it keeps you, the enemy, from, from you seeing what's not true and being given to it, and so on. Um, so does anybody have any um, com any, more, any comments or question? Apostle, I was just thinking about, um, you know, when, whenever we are thinking of the on right things and think we're in a place of rest with God when things are going on in our life and we are truly focused on doing the will of God and we're in the right place, which means we're thinking right, we have a different level of confidence about us when we're going through things. And when we have that, we also, our bodies feel better. You know, we don't feel stressed. We don't feel defeated. We don't feel bog boggled down. You know, we don't feel the aches and the pains. We feel the burden lifted when we are in a place um, where our mind and our soul, which starts with our soul, when our soul is in a right place of prosperity. Everything, like you said, it, it affects our life. Everything about us is better. So if we can continue to focus on, um, I was listening to Dr. Caroline Leaf and she says that it is our mind that tells our brain what to do. And she always talks about, you know, this very scripture, thinking on certain, paying attention to what it is we're thinking about. And that when our thoughts get crazy, we begin to purposely, think about what we're thinking about and redirect our thoughts. Then our brains begin to tell our bodies to do something different. So when our mind is telling our brain, you know, I'm stressed out, I'm mad, I'm angry. Then our mind is talk. That's the signal it's sending to the brain. So then the weight comes on to the body. When our minds are saying, you know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. I am above and not beneath. When we're thinking on good things, that's the signal it's sending to our brain and our bodies begin to rest in exactly what it is we are declaring. So not only do we have to think on what's good and pure and lovely, we have to make sure we're making the right declarations out of our mouth as well. Think on it, speak on it so that it sends the right signals to our bodies so that we can feel the weight and the pressure leave, you know? And I know for me, sometimes when I'm doing those things, because I make declarations all the time, especially when I feel like I'm weighted down, I start to shake, you know, and I try to shake off that which was holding me down. Amen. And see, see Philippians 4 and 8 is one of those warfare, uh, it's, a, it's an arrow of the Lord deliverance. It really is. Because... It is a it is a warfare. Um, it is a, a a an arrow of deliverance against what the opposite of those things. Whatever love things are love. It's it's the opposite. It's a 
a weapon against what's not lovely, what's not true, um, uh, all of those things. So it's a it's a, a arrow of the Lord's deliverance that we have to use. Because remember, we talked about Proverbs 4.23. This is why once we get the treasure of the Lord, the word of the Lord is the treasure of God. Once we get that treasure, we have to recognize that it is treasure and that there is an enemy that is coming, trying to break in our Fort Knox, trying to steal the treasure. And we have to guard that. And um, and so so how we guard that, this is one of the ways, uh, excuse me, Philippians 4 and 8, that's one of the ways we guard to keep against because if we, we don't, we allow the enemy to come in, he will deplete us of the prosperity that we have been given. And now we are bankrupt and we in poverty through stress, pressure, fear, anxiety, torment. We, we, we looking at you know everything and looking at everybody and, and all of these kinds of things because our soul is in poverty. And so we have to, we have to, we have to guard it. We have to guard it. And I, I'm, I'm saying this um, um, in, in closing, unless anyone else have any, any comments. Um, but that's why uh, we need to really adhere to this word um, and, uh, and really embrace and be about this good work, uh, really intentionally pursuing the prosperity of our soul because of what's coming in the days to come. We're going to need the prosperity of our soul, the word of the Lord, and the, and righteous peace and joy, the kingdom. Of God. We're going to need that in order to endure and withstand. The Bible says, after having done all to stand, he says, stand in these evil days. Having your lawns. This is Ephesians 6, uh, verse 12 on. Um, does anyone else have any comments they want to share? Evangelist Mel and Minister Val have their hands raised, Apostle. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the help because I, I can't see it. Um, Apostle, I was thinking about um, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. And I remember um, kind of back when I was going through it, back like <laughs> a few years ago, but I made that one of my memory scriptures. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, for, um, for the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And it's the same thing even when um, Prophetess Karen was talking about the lady uh, and when she noticed how she was getting out there, you know, and she had to, you know, pull herself in, you know, so when, you know, it's just like us when we have those thoughts that that goes against what the word of God says about us or for our life, we have to cast it down. Um, so it's like, it that takes work on our part, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to constantly be vigilant of our thoughts um, and we have to cast them down. Everything that's, that if, it, if it's not what God says, we have to cast it down and bring it into the obedient, bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And that's every thought, you know, because throughout your day, you could be just, you know, going about your day and and doing something and all of a sudden some crazy thought will pop in your head but you know and if you don't be careful you find yourself entertaining it and it's like we have to cast that down because like you say once we start thinking on it you know and then it's like a snowball then next thing you know like you say your health out of whack um um you feeling all down like the next person because we didn't cast that thought down absolutely Minister Val. Um, yeah, I wanted to reiterate on what um, Minister Cheney was saying. Yesterday, for some reason, I was looking at um, Lonnie on Real House um, on the Real, and she was telling her cast members how somebody had turned her on to this type of center to center herself. And she was talking about, you know, like you breathe in and out and, you know, you think on something, I love, but she was saying a loved one. And um, 
and you breathe in and out, then you take that same energy and you breathe in and out with somebody that's negative and you'll feel all this. And I, I dismissed it yesterday because I was always taught that there was a form of witchcraft or, you know, um, or there was a um, meditation um, was a form of, of witchcraft. So, but listening to you all tonight, and um and Shani came in and she was talking about the science part of it and then Pastor and, and Prophetess Karen, y'all was talking about but when we do these things, we can do it, but think on things that's lovely, that's kind. So it gives us a a a, a um a way to do it so that, that we don't cross over into something that um we shouldn't be crossing over in. So um, anybody got something to say, um, say regarding that? Absolutely, because that's <laughs> why, and that's why you have to be careful to really keep your keep your mind, because they, the enemy do have alternatives, and all of that yoga, meditation, and all of that stuff, and you know what I mean. It's meant the principle is right, the method, the 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 focus is wrong. Philippians four and eight gives us the godly principle and and method and way uh, to do it um and so that um our mind is is uh in perfect peace um philippians 4 and 8 i think uh was isaiah 26 um and those are just some of the things there are more because uh, what happens is remember the bible says um in um uh romans chapter 6 it says, whoever you yield your members to, that's whose servant you become. And so um, if you give yourself your members, that's your mind, your attention, all of that, everything you, everything about you that you give to anything other than God, that's whose servant you become. There is a right way to do it. We meditate. Remember going, what he said to Joshua, chapter one. That's the right way to do it. He said, this book of the law shall not, med shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night. And watch this, not just meditate day and night, he said, but you shall observe to do. He says, when you do that, then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. And so as a believer, that is the, the right principle, protocol, the method, the way that we're supposed to do it with the right focus. Um, and listen, let me say this. Um, Oh, oh, I don't want to get into too much. Uh, we, we could probably cover some more, uh, Lord willing, next week. But um, anytime, uh, you know, when they say stuff like clear your mind, that's not in the scripture. Because remember, an empty house is waiting to be inhabited. And there's only two spirits, spirit of truth and spirit of error. You will never find anywhere in the Bible where God instructed anybody to empty or clear their mind. Philippians 4 and 8 said, keep your mind. I mean, think on these things. Yes. Did um, someone else? Uh, yeah. yeah. Prophet Karen and Evangelist Terry have um, comment. Okay. Um, actually, Apostle, you actually kind of cleared up, you know, what I was going to raise my hand and say, because I was thinking on as far as the meditation concern, and you had already stated that we place those negative thoughts that we think that the enemy wants to put in our mind, you know, about, um, you know, anything, whatever he does, you know, not of God, you know, we know that um, that's the enemy trying to exalt himself over what God is telling us, so, you know, that's where people say far as meditation, when you clear your mind, yeah, you clear your mind and then you open your mind up for the enemy to even actually put more in there. So that's why, um, like I said, you have already addressed it, but we have to replace our mind, you know, with those negative, I mean, not with negative, with those positive things. That's one of my favorite scriptures, Philippians, Philippians 4 and 8, because we do have to think on those things. And it's so amazing because mommy just said, didn't we just go through this again? Yeah, because she was saying basically, this is kind of what we were having a conversation about earlier today. And it's just so amazing how it's almost 
word for word, Apostle. I just want to let you know that you've been a good teacher. <laughs> yes, because it's almost word for word as though you were sitting at the table whoop up. And yes, we had to replace them, you know, and I, I think about, I believe I heard somebody say something when we all were having a conference, they were, all the our members were talking about different things as far as pain and things like that. And even as I gave my testimony about how I was going through and I was receiving them thoughts in my mind about pain, about what the doctor said, all them kind of things, and it kept me in pain. And it was as simple as a possible. I know you know this with me changing my mind and I don't have the pain. I'm not going to say I ain't never got pain. I'm not even going to say the pain don't, you know, come every now and then, even when I walk or even when I wear shoes that I ain't supposed to wear. But, you know, because I have changed my mindset on how I even think about the pain, how, you know, sometimes we can make pain an idol. And, you know, how I think about it now, and even our, our prophet Sharon was telling that testimony about that lady that was really so good because what we have to do in the see, we got to recognize. We got to recognize when the enemy, you know, we, we, we come to Bible, we get this all the time. But when we start recognizing that he's trying to, um, get our, our mind all twisted up with some of them thoughts. That's what he died for. Jesus died for so we would be able to live freely in our mind. And I'm just so grateful. This this um a Bible study is so awesome. It seems like I missed two Bible studies. It seems like I ain't been here in months. But I'm telling you, this is so, so good. I threw a lot of shoes at you, Apostle. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But listen, that's why it's called a warfare. And even though you lose a battle, you keep fighting because the war is still not over. You keep fighting, you keep working on it. I think it was Prophet Kern. Yes. Um, as I'm looking at this scripture and I'm uh, going back to the very beginning of uh, the conversation that you had with us, it as adults. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, I'm choosing my words, mm -hmm. to sometimes, it is a challenge to receive correction or even clarification, mm -hmm. okay? okay? And so at the beginning, you gave some correction and some clarification to mm -hmm. us. Then at the end, you gave us instructions to do Philippians 4 and 8. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, that if we take instruction and if we take correction and see it as one of these, if I see correction as something that is honest, okay? Yeah. If I see correction, ah, thank you, Holy Ghost, as something that is true. Yes. If I see correction as something that is lovely because the apostle does not want us walking in a rebellious state. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If I see it differently, okay? Yes. then I will not feel, as uh, one of our sisters say, any old kind of way. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I will not, the spirit of offense won't come because I'm looking and I'm receiving it and I'm perceiving correction, not as something that's going to harm me or make me out of sort, but I'm seeing it as Philippians 4 and 8. And so that's something that, like you told us, that's something we have to, to do. Yeah. So I, I'm just saying that because, you know, a lot of the times, I, I, I can't say it for everybody, but I, I do know as for me as an adult, there are times when someone's correcting me or clarifying me, I can feel some kind of way. Okay? Yes. But I have to have a new mindset to say, wait a minute, like medicine that does not taste good, 
but it's good for me. Yes. And so I don't look at it as a negative. I look at it as the truth of God coming so that I will uh, uh, be in, remain, let's put it like this, remain in an upright state and not be walking in a manner that uh, could cause me to walk out of the will of God or say something that I should not say. I hope this helps somebody. I, I, I know for me, when I look at corrections, I do, I have to go back to four and eight and take these things out. And instead of seeing correction as correction or clarification, I see it as God saying to me something that is true, something that is needed, something that's going to help me so that I can be a better person. Amen. Wow, that, that was so good. That was so good. And see, and if we see even correct, see correction and instruction is really a covering for us and a protection. And like you said, if we see correction and instruction as an enemy, then already your, your, the posture of your soul, the poverty of your soul has been located. And so correction and instruction God sends as a covering and as a protection and to use against, um, to make your soul prosperous in that, that area, as opposed to um, still being deficient. So first, I mean, Philippians 4 and 8, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 through 8, talks about love, thinks no evil, sees no evil, uh, because if you do not um, make your soul prosperous with this word from God, then you'll, e you'll, e you'll, you'll be easily offended. You, you'll see you'll see everybody's against you. Uh, you can't trust nobody and, and your posture. And that's how that thought process would, will even transcend through your posture and your actions, your works um, and everything. So, so, so these are things that we have to do um, so that we become prosperous. Jesus knew, and you know, no matter how many times I, I read this and how I think about this, it still messes my mind up. He said, even when we were enemies against him, <laughs> it wasn't like, it wasn't like he, you know, he came to earth and then it's like, oh, wait a minute. They enemies against me. No, he, he knew it. But because he was prosperous, he was able to not be distracted or moved by our position and posture and mindset of enmity against him. Because Romans, I mean, Hebrews 12 says he endured it because of the joy that was set before him. And so we have to understand that because, listen, we have to maintain prosperity of soul because if we're going to really be witnesses for Christ, that means you're going to, we're going to, God's going to send us to people who are not prosperous in their soul. And you cannot go to a person who is not prosperous in their soul and let their poverty of soul inflict you and change and alter your status and your position. Because Paul said, once we all were, once we were all there, but we shouldn't be there now. Amen. So isms and schisms and all of those things exist because of poverty of soul. You can hate me. I can know you hate me. And I'm still good because that is your problem, not mine. And I will stand in my responsibility and, and, and honor the word of God. He says, love you, love them. And I'm not talking about y'all. I'm just as a figure of speech. He said, love them that despitefully hate you. And listen, that is a process, okay? Let me just be really transparent, really clear. That don't happen overnight. That is a process to get there. But what we have to intentionally, decision by decision, opportunity by opportunity, purposely choose to obey the word of the Lord. 
That's going to be painful at first because remember what I said, that anytime you embrace the truth of God and you obey the truth of God, it is going to spiritually cause a transaction to happen in your soul. And you will feel in your soul the effects of that warfare because that word of God, the truth of God is dealing with that poverty. And there's a transaction that happened. There's a transfer. Something is being exchanged. And you're going to feel the literally intangible warfare of that. But you got to stick with it until it, the work is completed. Okay. I get caught up. I'm, 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 amen. Is that, did anybody else have anything? <laughs> I know we, we're, way, we're well over our time, but um, praise God. All right, if there's no more comments, um, thank you all for joining uh, tonight. And um, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prosperous. Amen. Because God's sending us to people whose soul is going to need deliverance. And it's like a, it's like a rich man. Now, if I'm poor <clears throat> and I go to a poor man, I can't. I don't have no means to make him wealthy because I have nothing to give him in exchange. I don't have any ability to help him. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you tonight for this word. Thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light into our pathway. Father, we purposely choose to obey the word. Even in times of uh, discomfort, uh, when it cost us the sacrifice of obedience, your word says that when we're in the way, agree with our adversary quickly. So Father, tonight, anything in us that is against you, that is enmity to you, we don't make excuses for it. We agree with you because you're always right, always. And so we agree with you and we pray let the truth of your word be established, rooted and grounded in us, settled, that we be established in the faith, that we be established in present truth, that to you be glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name, that we not be deceived um, by the works of the enemy. And we thank you that it is your will, your desire, that we know your will. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so um, I don't think that we have any, uh, Pastor, we have any announcements, anything you want me to share? Um, just remember our game night is on uh, Saturday. Um, I've been putting you know, a flyer in uh, to group me. So um, come out. I'm going to just enjoy a time of fellowship and some games. There will be food on sale, which um, benefits the pastoral care. So please remember our game night on Saturday and then our service on Sunday. Um, please keep in mind, as you noticed, that uh, there was no advertisement for our Prophet Darling coming um, because we are considering uh, COVID restrictions and how much can be allowed in the house. So um, please keep that in mind as you are... Um, uh, coming as you are coming on Sunday, um, that we still have a restriction of how many can be in the house. We don't want to turn anyone away, but we do have to be mindful of the amount of people that, that are in the house. So um, just please keep that in mind, not just for this Sunday, but every Sunday, that we have to be just mindful of the amount of people that we have in the house, just to keep our, um, um, to stay in, in line with uh, what we have been asked to do by the state of Maryland. We appreciate you all so very much. Uh, those are our announcements. About you. Amen. And um, listen, we love you all with our life and appreciate the Lord for you. Um, I want to leave you just with this. The, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, um, because our adversary walks about uh, seeking in whom he may devour. Um, Watch and pray, saints. Um, I expect that there, um, this is still a time of transition. So there will be many things transitioning, many things changing, many things shifting. 
Hebrews 12 says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Truth is one of, is the word of the Lord. The Bible says that the shaking came because of the word of the Lord. And in this season, the true word of the Lord that's coming is causing a shaking in the land and in many people. And depending upon the your posture, your heart, if your heart is set on obedience to the Lord, then you'll receive the things of the Lord. And if not, um, the Bible says those things that are made um, will be moved. And it's all good. Because as a believer, we see it as all God. Um, so stay, stay on your watch. I love you all tremendously. Um, appreciate the Lord for you. Um, as we endeavor to move forward um, in these days to come, um, in the things of God, um, set your affections on things above. Do not allow the enemy to come in from the outside with the things you see around you and disturb your soul. Keep your mind stayed on him and in him. Philippians 4 and 8, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8. And may the God of all peace keep you, sanctify you. I pray the blessings of the Lord over our seed as we sow, over our times. Thank you, Father, that as we obey your word, thank you that the window of heaven is open. Thank you that there is a outpour blessing that is exceeding and abundantly above all we ask of thing. And to you be the glory and praise. All right, everyone, love y'all. Have a great, great rest of the night. And um, we will be having a uh, corporate prayer on this coming Thursday at seven. Um, and I will send some more information out tomorrow, Lord willing. Um, and uh, I will work on sending it out a little bit earlier. Amen. Love you all. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.